Hi guys, Mr. McIntyre here. Um, looking at to starting functions, uh, a little bit of set theory, the domain and range. That will hopefully all make sense for you in a second. But primarily, we're going to look at functions. Um, and I want to kind of remind you of when you first encounter functions. Um, actually, what we've got is the definition of a function here is a mathematical instruction that takes one number using a rule and changes it into another number. Okay, so that sounds relatively complex, but the first functions you would have seen um, and probably in primary school were the, the small function machines um, where you have a, an in option, something happens in the middle and an out option. And you're probably sitting thinking, I'm not really sure what that means, but uh, so I'll show you actually. So what I mean by that is, um, you would have had something very basic in primary school where you had an in, I think they would have had a plus three and an out, okay? So that would have been in, that would have been out, and you would have done things like if I have a five, what do I get out? Five plus three would have given you an eight. They were the first kind of functions you would have looked at and they were called functions machines i'm sure you would have progressed to probably um some that had a couple of steps in them um and actually what we've got is we've got something very similar to that that you've that you've just worked on uh, i don't know how i've written out there but that's fine um what you've got with your straight line actually as a function is We've got 2x plus 3, say, and we've just covered straight line. What's happening, first of all, is you're taking the x, you're putting it in to the function. It's times in by 2, and then you're adding 3 to your answer. So that would be add 3. So that would have been how you would have seen it in, sorry, the in, in orange there would have been how you would have seen it in primary school, but you might not have known that you are dealing with functions when dealing with a straight line, but that's actually the same. It's another way of writing it. We've got something that's going into a formula or a function. Two things are happening, times and by two and adding three. So you have seen them before. This is just maybe the first time you've heard it uh, formally uh, explained. Okay, so if we go back to the, the first page, what we've got is, I've, I've just obviously stolen a march on it a little bit, but you've seen possibly um, more than one function by this point, but the the, the, the most recent that you've uh, used is a straight line. And generally, the formula for a straight line is in the form of mx plus c. And I mentioned there previously that what you've got is for a straight line, You've got values that go in to the straight line formula and a value that comes out. Now, the value that goes in is the x value, and what comes out is the y value. Okay, so ultimately, let's just say, for example, we put 1 in as the x value for this exact um, straight line. We go up, and what comes out as the y value is also 1. So... That's created using a formula like this. You would have numbers in place of M and C, but ultimately the types of functions that you'll see are along the same line as Y equals MX plus C. Um, the second type of function, which is the function you're gonna move on to in the future, uh, is something called a parabola, and that's effectively a smiley face, okay? and the formula for that function is ax squared plus bx plus c. And it's the same thing. You'll have values going in. The x value will go in. The y value will come out. But you might notice a slight change there. And it's got a smiley face. And some of you might, this should not be eagle eyed, you'll notice that that looks like very similar to the trinomials you've been tackling um, previously as well. So there are links across the topics and, and we will talk about trinomials when we start to look at um, quadratics, which is what that is. And it's a parabola or a smiley face. And the third function that you're going to see, well, you probably won't see till you're in higher, is something called a cubic. And 
the eagle eyed once again of you. Um, oh, I'm going to run out of tight space there. The eagle eye of you there will see that there's been an increase in the power above the X, and uh, a cubic has a kind of double peak or trough, a peak and a trough shape. And again, it's a function where values go in and uh, another value comes out. So the three functions you'll you'll see. Uh, generally in the maths uh, are a straight line, uh, parabola, which is a quadratic, and a cubic. Okay, um, so this one here is a quadratic, as I say, and we will look at quadratics later in the year. But functions, ultimately something that goes, uh, that has, that changes a value that enters it, right? And in these formula, they all have values that go in in each of them, and the value that goes in each of these are is generally the X value. You're probably asking yourself, why, why is he talking to us about quadratics when we're going to tackle that later, or cubics, which we might look at, at higher. It's just um, the best way to introduce them. And I don't want you to get yourself stressed out if you're thinking, well, that seems very complex. Um, we are going to go into those specific functions in more detail. I just want to get you up to speed with the function, the term of function, and some function notation, okay? So function notation, first of all, you will see things uh, written as, if we take the straight line function, written as mx plus c, or if we take an actual uh, numerical value, we could have 3x minus 1. There is another way to write it for functions. What we have is we have f of x equals mx plus c. So what this would look like would be um, just f of x equals 3x minus 1. Okay, now what that means is it's saying, it's a little easier to see this little bit inside here, that's what goes into the function, and and there's changes that, that are made to that x value. We mentioned before that the two stages are, it's whatever is multiplying and then what's ever adding or subtracting. So if we were to take it to the other side, what's going into this function is the x, the first step, we're going to multiply that x by 3, and then after that, we would subtract 1. And, and that's the, the notation for it. You could see, uh, sometimes you will see uh, graphs, that, and they may write y equals f of x, um, and it's interchangeable. We need to be able to use both. But for functions, whenever we're dealing with a function, we're going to use the terminology f of x. Um, so f of x equals mx plus c. Okay. So in other words... The x is going into the function, and what you're going to get out, instead of it being a y, is the fx. Okay, just a very quick recap then. Um, so we've got our functions that we've now, we've, we've now looked at, basically the straight line function, the quadratic function, or a parabola. Uh, and I did mention a cubic. Now, I don't want to um, labor too much over the cubic. However, I do want to just quickly recap the notation. So if you have a look at the portion highlighted in red. What we've got is we've got three examples of functions. Uh, and I mentioned f of x, and it almost made it look like it was always going to be f of x. This just shows you a function is written as f of x equals x squared plus 3. That's one example um, of a function. Oh, forgive me, that's not what I wanted to do. So that's one example of a function. And clearly, that's a parabola as it has an x squared term, but we'll come back to that. But we can have functions that are named using different letters. So the variables in the functions are, are different letters. So we uh, see below that we've got p of x, and that describes a straight line because there's 3x plus 1. And also you can see s, um, sorry, f of x, sorry, <laughs> s of t, and we've got t represented uh, again, as a parabola, so 2t squared plus 4t minus 1, okay? So s of t um, and p of x and f of x, all terminology that, that can be used when dealing with functions. Um, now, there's another couple of key um, terms that we want to look at. So uh, the words domain and range are, are going to factor quite 
heavily here. So the domain is effectively the numbers that go in, and the range is the number, well, or the range is the numbers are the numbers that comes out. So domain is ultimately any value that can be represented by x, and the range is the results of any values that have been put in to the function. Okay, and we will I'll give you notes on that as well. So if we just have a look at a kind of pictorial um, representation of the domain and the range, it might help things a little bit. Um, I, I do want to revisit what I looked at before um, previously. So this is just a reminder of what happens when we represent um, a, a function f of x. We can see that what's happening to the 3 that goes into this function is multiplied by 5 first. Then subtracted by two, uh, then they subtract the two. So 15 take away two gives us 13. What I want to make clear here is that if we were asked to then plot the graph of that function, we would be looking for the x value to be three and the f of x or the y value to be 13. Okay, so if we were to continue and to continue to substitute into that function, the, the values that we would substitute in would be the domain. And let's say we took every example of uh, these th or, uh, on the left-hand side in yellow there. So the domain is what goes into the function and the range is what comes out. And at each stage, as you can see here, they're going into a new function, which is 2x squared plus 1. Okay, slightly different to what we've done before. But if we had to take that, we would have f, oh, forgive me, we would have f of x equals 2x squared plus 1, not something we're going to deal with just yet. So we would have 2 times x squared plus 1. And at each stage, we're going to have to square the x, times it by 2, and add 3. So there's a, there's a fair few stages here. So in the first instance, if we had f of 2, if we take that one here, then that would be 2 times 2 squared plus 1. 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8, add 1 gives us our 9, and that's the value that comes out. So at each stage, if we do the same, 3 squared is 9, times 2 is 18, add 1 is 19, 5 squared is 25, times 2 is 50, add 1 is 51, and so on and so forth. So domain are the, the domain and the numbers that go into a function, and the range of the numbers that come out. And the more mathematical um, explanation and definitions is in the notes um, that will be shared on Google Classroom. You can read it there. So domain is any number given which you can represent by x or represent x with. And the range is the complete, complete set of all possible results from the x that goes into the function. But in simple terms, domain, the numbers that go in, and the range is the numbers that come up. Okay, ultimately, uh, to introduce us properly to the functions, what we're going to do is we're just going to do some, some basic sketching, and that's what I'm going to set you this week, some basic sketching of functions. And we'll start off with uh, the simplest of uh, functions, and it's the straight line. So if we start off and I was to say, I want you to sketch the function of f of x equals 3x plus 5. And what we would do is we would decide values that are going to go into this function that are going to hopefully um, produce um, the f of x value, or not hopefully they will produce the f of x value. So to keep things nice and simple, we'll use the, the grid I've got on the right hand side, and we'll choose a couple of straightforward um, values for x. So if we, if we choose minus 2, 0, 2, and 4, then we can easily represent them on the graph. So if I take x equals minus 2, then what I've actually got is I've got f of minus 2. And as I mentioned before, everywhere we see an x, we'll replace it with the minus 2. So what we've actually got is 3 times minus 2 plus 5. So 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, plus 5 is minus 1. So that value, minus 1, can go in there. And what that actually produces is it produces the coordinate, first of all. So our first coordinate, the x value was minus 2, and the y value was minus 1. So if we start here, minus 2, minus 1. Okay, equally, 
If we were to take f of 0, then everywhere we see the 0, we have 3 times 0 plus 5. That's going to give us 5. 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 5 is 5. So 0 and 5, that gives us our second coordinate. The x is 0, and the f of x, or the y, is 5. And I mentioned this before, this y here, you might see it written y equals f of x. Okay, so if we were to plot that value, 0, 5. Okay, now this grid obviously is going to extend, uh, and I should have probably picked an example that would allow us to plot more points, but at the end of the day, all we're going to need for um, uh, plotting a point in this case is we just need two points, and from there, we should be able to plot our line. So if we were to take a line, oh, forgive me, if we were to take a line straight from negative 2, negative 1 to 0, 5, that will give us a straight line or as close as we can, and we're able to sketch the graph. If we were now to look at a, a quadratic or a squared term, and then we would have f of x. Let's take a really simple one. We'll call it x squared plus 1. And let's try and pick some uh, straightforward uh, examples uh, or x values to make it a little easier to fit it into the diagram. This time let's go for minus 2, minus 1, 0, and 1. And so in the same vein, we would take f of minus 2. And what we've got there is we've got x squared, so it'll be minus 2 squared plus 1. Minus 2 squared plus 1 is 2 negatives. We'll multiply to give us a positive. 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. So the 5 can go in as the y value or the f of x value. Again, I should, I should remind you that, that it's also f of x. So f of minus 1 is minus 1 squared plus 1. We have 1 plus 1 is 2. So we've got 2. So the two coordinates we start off with are minus 2, 5, minus 1, 2. We'll be able to fit in a few more this time. So if we take now f of 0, that will be 0 squared plus 1. So that's just 1. So that's going to give us the third coordinate of 0, 1. And finally, f of 1 is going to give us 1 squared plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. And therefore, we get our final value is 2, and we have the final coordinate, 1, 2, and we can plot these and sketch our graph. So let's take the coordinates, minus 2, 5, minus 2, left 2, up 5, minus 1, 2, left 1, Sorry, left 1 and up 2, 0, 1, just 1 and 1, 2. Now, hopefully you'll recognise that there is a bit of symmetry when it comes to this type of diagram. And we will join that as our smiley face. But you would rec recognise that what that's going to do is it's going to join up with the next one we had x is 2 it would end up being 2 5 okay, that would be how we would sketch a function and that function itself is called a parabola or a quadratic function and we are going to talk about that in more detail but the, the I want you to have a have a, a go at, at actually substituting into these functions then we'll kind of concentrate a little bit more on what each function is and, and the effects of of those functions.